friends. Yeah. The Mumbai Waterfronts project that I'm presenting here is a, uh, is a part of a larger movement for reclaiming public space, uh, public spaces in Mumbai. Uh, I keep saying that as the city of Mumbai is expanding, and undoubtedly it's growing and expanding in many spheres, uh, its public space is continuously shrinking. Could I? Uh, yep. Um, both the movement and the project is, in a sense, a protest or an intervention against the continuous abuse, neglect, and misuse of public spaces uh, and the waterfronts in particular. The movement uh, aims to restore and expand the kind of meager open space that the city of Mumbai has. This kind of shows where Mumbai stands and compared to London, New York, Chicago, and Tokyo. We have about 0.25 acres per thousand people, uh, which in contrast to London is something like 7.2 acres a thousand people. Uh, Mumbai is a city on the water. Uh, but the waterfronts of the city have never been considered as an integral aspect of the integral part of the city's landmass. Our objective here is to prepare a comprehensive plan for the city's waterfronts, integrated with the development of the city. To begin with, we have the waterfronts, the western waterfronts of approximately 40 kilometers and the Bandra waterfronts in particular in that of approximately four kilometers where we started the work or the project. One of the objectives of this project is protection of the environment and conservation of the eco-sensitive borders of the city. The waterfront is a precedent, the waterfront project is a precedent for democratic planning and collective action, bringing together professionals, neighborhood citizens, private sponsors, and the government, its various agencies. But with a difference that here for the first time, the local residents or citizens associations are at the helm of the project or control collectively the spaces, the project, and its maintenance. Through succinct struggle and collective action, the waterfronts, which is often treated, which has been treated as the backyard of the city, and literally treated as a dumping ground, both physically and metamorphically, are proposed to be turned around to proud social and cultural four courts. I will now very briefly inform and mention how this project really began. The Waterfront Project has been a bottom-up process in the sense that we rely upon views from below and active participation of the local communities. The initial plans that was drawn up by me in a voluntary capacity for the 40 kilometers of the Western Waterfronts was widely discussed in the public, particularly with the residents associations uh, along the 40 kilometers of the waterfront. The plan was very quickly adopted and its ownership was taken over by the local residents associations who then committed to carrying out the project, seeing its implementation, and then subsequently maintaining the waterfronts. It wasn't so easy though. There were several public interest litigations that we had to file in the courts of law, including the Supreme Court. And in some instances, the courts even ordered for the implementation of the plan against many obstacles and obstructions that we uh, continuously faced. The Bandra Waterfront's successful implementation popularized the need for protecting the waterfronts of the city and generated a movement for reclaiming public spaces. This is just shows you the western waterfront of Mumbai and the various parts of that uh, from the north to down to the south. I will now very quickly go through some visuals of the Bandra Waterfront's development, which largely has three uh, parts to it. One is the Bandra Bandstand, 
which is approximately 1.2 kilometers long. We then have the Carter Road, which is approximately one kilometer, and we have the Land Send, which is about half a kilometer. The project has no grandiose ideas here, in the sense that we haven't proposed any major construction. No clubs, no buildings, no commercial activity. The idea is to keep them open and clear forever. We believe that democracy thrives in the open public spaces where body and mind can be exercised. At this point, I'd like to kind of quote um, some lines from a book by Mr. Charles Correa, The New Landscape, where he says that the pavements along the seafront in Mumbai, and I quote, uh, which incidentally do not show up in the statistics are the great community spaces of our city. Obviously, we should generate many more such promenades. They are the heart of the social life of the tropical temperate zones. Unquote. What really excites me most about this project and this movement is that it stands to challenge the destruction of the mangroves, the landfilling and the dumpings, the pollution of the, of the coast and the waters, the encroachment and continuous colonization attempts of public space by private developers, abuse, misuse, and degradation of the natural environment and the coastline, and the kind of apathy and indifference that, that both the government and, in fact, people to a large extent have towards public spaces, and the kind of behavior public and youth behavior in public spaces. With, public effective, with effective public action and neighborhood residents' determination, the Bandra waterfronts remains under collective control and are safe and well-maintained. Well, the Mandra project and subsequently projects in other parts of Mumbai have really demonstrated new governance models in the city, which has interestingly been built upon this tripartite relationship where the local citizens at the helm, the financiers or corporate sponsors, and the governmental agencies have been able to come together through this project. The funding initially was mobilized through members of parliament, uh, and several members of parliament generously contributed to the project. Hence, it was built on public funds, and which was mobilized by the residents' movements. The locals of the area commemorate this victory with festivals like the Bandra Festival. There is a, almost a 15-day festival that takes place with, with poetry reading, literature, theater, etc., which really all started with the Waterfronts Project. Uh, in fact, we have Mr. Darrell DeMonte here, who is the president of the Bandra Residents Association and also uh, the chairperson of the festival, the Bandra Festival. This project. Uh, the festival, some of the visuals of the festival. Uh, this project, of course, has won many awards that has encouraged us tremendously, including uh, co-sharing the, the first Urban Age Award. Now, I'll go on to conclude some of the key lessons that we have from this project. Um, yeah, that's right, just quickly, just a couple of points which is important. The waterfronts have to be understood as a part of, a op of the open spaces network. And the open spaces network must be integrated to the larger development plan of the cities. As a matter of fact, we can look at the physical plans and developments of our cities differently. We often look at cities from the point of view of real estate opportunity, or what could be the real estate turnover and potential real estate turnover in a city. Can we look at our cities and its development plans from the point of view of public spaces. For I believe that public dignity is reflected in the state of public spaces and vice versa. This can give a wonderful picture of Mumbai. We can do that and we're doing that now in Juhu uh, where we are now prepared a plan called the Juhu Vision Plan where we're not only networking the, open, the waterfronts but we're networking the waterfronts with other open spaces where we're saying we're reimagining public space and in a sense, we're going across borders and barriers to integrating Juhu as a neighborhood. And our objective is then gradually to look at Mumbai as a whole, as a city, where a network of public spaces really would be the basis of the city's redevelopment plans. 
The last that I believe, and this is what is very important, I as an architect, I believe that planning and design is an effective democratic tool for mobilizing public action and for bringing about much needed social change. Can we consider public spaces as a metaphor for democracy? The movement continues. And we have after Bandra, which is about four kilometers, we're now doing a kilometer of the Chimbai beach where the fishermen, uh, the, is an old fishing settlement. We're now doing, we've completed Juhu Beach, which is a four kilometer beach that is now rested with the local residents association. We revamped completing the Gate of India project. We're doing an entire redevelopment plan for Nariman Point, which has essentially got many waterfronts with it, and we're integrating that with its open spaces network. Thank you very much, my friends.